What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Casual Crux here. We don't have the green screen. We don't have anything going on. Nothing fancy. I just wanted to go ahead and get this information out to you guys as soon as possible. So as you may or may not know, ESO did their 2024 global reveal and they uncovered pretty much what their plans are for the upcoming quarters in 2024. There are some surprises. There are some letdowns. PvP is actually mentioned. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's hop into it. Okay, so here in the background, we do have a screenshot of the 2024 content roadmap for the Elder Scrolls Online. Let's uh, see what they're cooking up in Q1, you know, through Q4. Now, while you're here, like and sub, I really appreciate the uh, the support here on the channel. I also do stream on Twitch um, quite often, actually, so uh, go check me out down there. So, update 41, this will be the first quarter, so we're going to get the uh, new uh, DLC game pack, you know, with a dungeon. Uh, quality of life improvements, um, this is just kind of, I don't really know what this is. You know, it's just like, here you go, take our money, you know, type of thing. So, we also do have the, the new chapter, West Wield Zone, and also the scribing system. So, what needs to be pointed out you know you know new dlc zone you know this is gonna be around the the gold coast a new chapter you know pretty typical for the reveals but the scribing system so the scribing system is actually the spell crafting system so i'm going to take a few moments and kind of explain a uh, cliff notes version how this system is going to work so in the background we do have a a sample ui that they have presented this UI actually doesn't look finished. I really hope it's a little bit more uh, in-depth than this. But essentially, the way it was explained is that you are going to have specific skills for certain skill lines to start out with. This will divulge into more skill lines eventually. But at the time of recording this, it seems like it's going to be for a very select a few skill lines. So. What this means is that in my previous video um, about how spellcrafting is going to ruin you, so I did kind of theorize how the system was going to work. It's going to be essentially a slider system. So you can kind of see here in the, the PvP background, they, they showcase a Khajiit doing a little jumpy animation. So these are going to be predetermined skills. You're not going to be able to completely craft your skill from scratch um, like you could in Oblivion. So um, and again, this isn't going to be a full list of skills. Uh, more things will divulge um, the more the, the chapter evolves. And also, I did theorize about that as well. Okay. And let it be known before I proceed. This is pay to win. You have to buy the chapter in order to gain access to the system. So it is locked behind a paywall. Surprise, surprise. Right. But uh, I will explain how the system works. So you will essentially have a brand new skill line. In the skill line, you'll be able to unlock kind of like the scribing system, uh, unlock, you know, new perks and stuff, you know, for your scribing. And essentially, this is your, your scribing tool. OK, so you would notice that we have a primary, secondary and tertiary effects. So that skill line will bolster these effects. I'm assuming you will unlock all the different affinities for these. Um, I'm just making assumptions at this point. I don't see how else you would do this. You unlock, you know, like, for example, you need to do something for the bleed effect. You need to do something for the Hawkeye effect or de defiance effect. So the very first column, which is your primary. So this is going to change the type of damage that it does, you know, physical venom, fire, bleed, mobilizing, restoration. So this is where you're really going to tailor. Let me point out in particular venom. So scavenging demise, you guys may or may not know. We had a video about this, of how to ex uh, how to uh, exploit that set uh, they since fixed it but uh being able to rock poison damage on a lot of classes is going to open the viability of that set to a lot of classes scavenging maw or scavenging demise rather is the hardest hitting proc set in the game like it really is and it's on su such a super low cooldown so we are going to be coming out with a lot of builds with this when the spell system comes out all right so uh, like and sub you won't be notified for that content so essentially that's what the first column is going to be your secondary column is going to be some buffs um in the stream they mentioned hawkeye so hawkeye is a buff that is going to buff all of the other damage abilities in your bow skill line okay i'm not sure how the rest of these are going to work i'm assuming you know stare they seem pretty uh pretty self-explanatory you know restoration over time recovery and then you have your third effect the tertiary effect in which you can add certain buffs and debuffs that you're missing um so notice in this i don't see a stun like, I would like to see a stun in the primary slot. Notice we have like a taunt, a restoration, a mobilize. You know, th there's no stun here. I think if they had like a stun option, that would be pretty cool. But essentially, that's how it's going to work. So you'll have a predetermined skill 
and then you'll be able to like slider that skill you know kind of, kind of copy and paste from your predetermined um skills here so this is pretty cool it's kind of what i expected i didn't expect anything too crazy um but the thing is guys we we don't have enough ability slots so when you start the spell crafting system where are you gonna put all this stuff you know what i mean it's hard to get hard enough to get all the buffs and debuffs that you need on any class, especially the Necromancer in particular, which I'm maining at the moment. Oh, God, I just, I just hate my life right now. It's, it's been a long week with that class, but uh, I do have a good build for it. Um, keep an eye for that one. But um, it's it's where are you going to put this? I mean, some classes you might be able to get away with it, like the, the Stamp Sork. You have a lot of flex spots on that, but, uh, you know, it's. It's going to be tough. Um, it will kind of round out a lot of builds. Um, what is most interesting to me is the primary slots. Being able to change the damage type is a big deal because this is really going to open up a lot of build variability for like pretty much the 400 unused sets that we have, right? So being able to change the damage type to make certain sets proc could potentially be really powerful. It's not going to be broken because it's essentially going to just utilize sets that are already in the game and it's just gonna make it easier to, to run different sets and i'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent um before i finish out the rest of this we will get to the pvp portions i do have a clip of pvp um that i want to show you that i found that it, it was uh pretty much sums up <laughs> their, their their thoughts on pvp at the moment but one thing to mention is again we have like 400 unused sets um, we simply need more build slots. We need like two more ring slots or what I call a set affinity in which you can, you can extract the essence of a five piece and have it just attached to your build in like a gem slot or a cape slot or, or an affinity slot. You know what I mean? So you'll forego the two, three and four piece, but you can just slap the five piece of any set onto your build. You know, and it's just like a passive effect. I think that would be a really good idea. It's kind of open up more build options as well as you know just just you know just spicing things up you know making you feel a little bit more powerful you know we we you know we're, we're out here slaying gods you know what i mean like i want to feel powerful i don't want to fall off a 16 foot cliff to my death and die to environmental fall damage you know what i mean that doesn't uh doesn't bode well right so you know something like that or again adding uh, two extra ring slots just so you can run more five pieces to further expand your builds i think would be a great option i really hope they expand on that in the future Okay, so we'll come back to the content roadmap now. They, they, they did have a skill styling, so they did mention uh, some of the skills are going to have a different particle effects, you know, different, you know, to make them look a little bit cooler. Um, that really doesn't matter to me. Um, I would rather have skins like, for example, for the Sorcerer and the Matriarch and the Clan Fear. If you could have, like, different skins for those pets, you know, it might be kind of cool. But uh, they did say eventually they're going to get around to a lot of the abilities and allow you to customize it the way they look, you know, just... Just adding a different color scheme doesn't really, you know, that, 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 that's not like a global reveal event, right? But yeah, um, that's uh, essentially the, the scribing system in a nutshell. And then uh, this is, I hate this, this update 43, this, this rose me the wrong way. So the new housing feature, they didn't really expand upon this at all. So they're using an entire quarter to do quality of life improvements and bug fixes. So this is unacceptable to me. They should be doing this at every step of the way not cheating us out of content and treating this like this is a feature of the quarter like hey yeah we're gonna work on all the bugs you should have already been doing that to begin with so to just essentially take a full quarter off and try to sell this as a feature on this roadmap is not cool this this is very bitter tasting and it's just it's just meh, meh. But the moment you've all been waiting for, update 44, two new companions, who, who gives a, a crap? And then new PVP related feature. So we move over to update 44, which is pretty much why most of you guys clicked on this video to begin with, two new companions, who cares? But they did mention new PVP related feature. So what exactly is that feature? So um, I'm going to let Rich Lambert expand upon that, shall we? 3937. <laughs> There's the big <laughs> There's the big gulp, dude. The big sigh. <laughs> yep. Right there it is, dude. <laughs> when you close your eyes, like notice the entire time he's talking. So this is 
39-39. Like, notice all the other times he's talking. Similar to what we he's looking you right in the eyes. He's not, not, like not looking away. He's not... You know what I mean? You, you see what I mean, right? And then we go to 39-39. You might... <laughs> Uh, wham, wham, wham. Want to pay particular attention to this update? <laughs> go back, bro. Go, go, wait, wait. One more, one more frame. I'm sorry. One more, one more. Just his countenance right here Minor says players, it all, dude. Says it all. You might want to pay particular attention. Look how many times he's looking away, dude. Looking away, just like he doesn't want to like address this out loud, but he feels like he has to. Because in the last global event, they got absolutely murdered for not mentioning PvP. So they gave us a five second segment. He is not happy. Like, he is having a hard time stomaching this statement. To this update. <laughs> Wait, right here, right here. Oh, fuck, I gotta go back. Just just one frame. I missed it. One frame. This, this, this is the frame I want. This little side smirk right here. You might want to pay particular attention to this update. Right. Ooh. Ooh. And, and look at Gina's face, dude, in this frame. This says it all. Like, screenshot this. This is. <laughs> look at her face, dude. She's like, ugh. PvP, ugh. <laughs> oh my god, dude. There, yeah, that's that. This is all you. This is the screenshot for PvP right here. Boom, boom. Notice how he's holding his hands, like very, like safe, secure. You know, very anxious. She, Gina's doing the exact same thing. She's got her hands and fingers crossed when talking about this. It's not willy nilly and free. The, mm, they better deliver, boys. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> anyway. So, as you guys can see, I mean, if you go back and watch the live stream, when the word PvP is mentioned, Rich's body language completely changes, he tenses up. It is very obvious that they just don't want to address this topic, but uh, as far as I can recall from last year's Global Reveal, they didn't even mention PvP and they got kind of lit up for it. So essentially, they're just blue balling us with this promise to have a new PvP related feature. Um, if I can toss my two cents in on this and I what I think would be a phenomenal idea, I don't think this is what the PvP feature is going to be. My suggestion or theory of what I think would be best is a purchasable map, like a housing map that you can buy that will allow you to have PvP in your home. With that being said, you can customize rule sets, you can customize the terrain, Whenever someone steps into your house, you can have like a flag set of rules, you know, for PvP, free for all. Maybe you can assign teams. And then once players have like built maps, maybe have a way to suggest this to the devs, maybe like a forum, like a community, you know, ledger or something like that, and have the community vote on the best maps. Okay. Like each month, have one map the community votes on. Hey, this map is awesome for PvP and then had that map imported into the battleground rotation so essentially you're allowing the community to do the work for you from a dev perspective right you're getting money from it from a marketing perspective and then from the player perspective you're actually having fun with brand unique content all the time that's been introduced in the battleground system i think that would be a win 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 all the way around is this the new pvp related feature probably not but if i was a dev and if i played this game for 10 years and if i've been on the receiving end of zasa's wrath behind the scenes bought this game as a consumer a content creator i think that would be fan freaking tastic to give some power to the players to customize pvp the way we want give us our own little sandbox and just turn us hog wild with it i think that would just speak volumes but what do I know? I'm just a Crumb Magnum. I'm a Neanderthal. I'm a PvPer. I don't know crap about crap. Okay. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much all that was noteworthy of mentioning in this. Uh, there was a lot of lore, you know, a lot of map design and stuff. I'm not really going to cover that, um, cover that in this video. If you want to go back and take a look at the live stream, it's on Twitch and also on the Bethesda's YouTube as well. If you want to see it in full, 
But uh, that really about does it for the summary. Not a lot of stuff, man. Uh, not a lot of stuff. The scribing system is going to shake things up. Is it going to be broken? Probably not. Is it going to be hindered by the lack of spell slots? Yes, absolutely. And then when it comes to the PvP related content, again, we get kicked under the rug and really no solid proof on what they're really working on. Just a generic statement of new PvP related features. So if you like my suggestions about what the PvP feature should be, let me know down in the comments. Or if you have your own suggestions on what the PvP feature should be, let me know. It'd be nice to kind of talk with you guys to get some good ideas. And who knows, the devs may pick this video up get some ideas and try to implement them in the future. So who knows? Anyway, it's been Horcrux. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your night. Now I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.